hi good evening thank you so much for coming back watching my youtube videos this is simon nadeem if you haven't met me before i'm a nurse from pakistan but currently working here in the uk in today's video we are going to talk about dementia its symptoms and how to care for a patient who has dementia so if you are interested if you are a carer if you are a nurse uh, or a doctor this video is for you because if you are coming to the uk in the nhs hospitals a lot of patients they got this disease um it's not a disease i'll explain all about it uh, in the video but uh, you need to know what is dementia and uh, what are the symptoms of this uh, uh, condition if someone has dementia how they are going to behave and how you can care them care for them better or in a efficient way so if you are interested in this topic please watch the video till the end we are going to discuss each and everything about dementia if you have if you are new to this channel i provide information about uk nursing and each and everything around me here in the uk if you are a returning viewer i would like to say a big thank you so first thing first we need to know what is dementia dementia is umbrella term for loss of memory or uh, impaired ability to think properly or to take decision uh, someone has difficulty in making decision uh, for their life or for their day-to-day uh, -day activities or if someone cannot remember what they are doing or if someone can't remember what they were what was their usual routine or they can't remember what was their favorite food was their favorite uh, uh, season of uh, favorite clothes or of anything if they can't remember exactly about their day-to-day -day activities or about their um, um, we are living they probably have dementia and uh, if if there is a, if their um, ability to think or their ability to make decision is impaired it's called dementia uh, they don't have it's not a disease it's a umbrella term for these symptoms if someone cannot make decision for themselves or if someone cannot take care of themselves or uh, they they uh, are not able to behave in their normal way they probably have dementia so symptoms of dementia can be a uh, poor concentration loss of memory as we said and uh, hard to carry out um, uh, daily activities struggling to follow conversation being confused mood changes or uh, if you are trying to help them or and they are getting agitated so these are the symptoms for dementia and uh, to be honest when you are talking to a patient who has dementia they respond to the way you talk to them so if you are talking to them in a very nicely and calm way they will respond to you in a calm way as well but if you are in a rush and if you are talking to them like very fast or they are not getting uh, what you are saying it can make them it can make them confused it can make them agitated so you need to know how to communicate well it is a key uh, good communication calm behavior calm uh, if you are very calm in your way of talking they will respond to you properly as well so don't think that um, they are like um, uh, they can be agitated right away no they can be very quiet they can be very calm they can be agitated as well but our behaviors our way of communication uh, can contribute to it so you need to be aware of your way of communication you need to know how to talk to them you need to have a training proper training uh, for to take care of patients with dementia and uh, it's quite easy if you know what you are doing if you know if you try to understand their symptoms if you um, uh, try to help them in a positive way in a calm way they'll be able to follow your instructions so there are four main types of dementia the first one is alzheimer's Alzheimer's is very very common one and a lot of people they get this disease and there is a Lewy body dementia frontal temporal dementia and there is also vascular dementia we will not go into detail we are just going to discuss as a nurse or as a healthcare support worker how you are going to take care of patient who has dementia we discussed already the symptoms uh, the symptoms I have written uh, right uh, I wrote it down because uh, sometimes it's uh, difficult uh, when you make video 
especially in front of camera i can't remember things so the first thing is memory loss a difficulty performing a familiar task problem with language disorientation um and disorientation is a very common one because most of the time they wouldn't know where they are and what they are doing there impaired judgment uh, problems with the uh, thinking misplacing things and um, also like uh, they can't make decision for themselves and they won't know sometimes they won't know uh long-term symptoms of uh, dementia can be incontinence or continence problems or um they won't be remembering what they like to eat or what is their usual routine so if you know someone if uh, if they uh, have their relatives there in the ward or you can call their relatives to ask what is their usual routine or what they like to eat uh, for their main meals uh, so you can get all the information about the patient it will be easier for you to handle the patient if you know their likes and dislikes if you know what they prefer to wear what kind of clothing they like to wear and uh, what time do they get up and what time do they sleep do they uh, sleep with the light on or off or um, do they like to use the commode bedside commode or they like to walk to the toilet so if you are if you know these things it will be easier for you to handle the situation it will be easier for you to talk to the patient and also you know, to get all the information about the patient uh, sometimes uh, we need to change the words where, how we talk to the patient if you are telling to the patient let's go and take a shower and they are getting frightened with it or they don't like the word shower so you need to change the words you can say uh, we can we are going to the toilet just for freshening up or you can say it's your spa time or you, you just need to change the words maybe uh, and it will be easier for them to understand some people they don't like the word bath so you need to change the words in order to take them to the shower room or in order to have them uh, to pro perform personal hygiene care and also the very important uh, thing to remember is their dignity everybody uh, everybody their dignity and their privacy is very very important so you need to tell them we need to close the curtain so you can wash your private parts it's not nice to uh, wash the private parts openly so you just need to be quiet you just need to be calm with them you just need to be patient with them and uh, they'll be very happy with you and a lot of people a lot of staff they get difficult uh, they get difficulty in dealing with um, dementia patients because they don't know how to communicate with them so the first and most important thing for you is to remember when you are talking to a patient who has dementia you need to be calm in your tone and uh, your tone should not be very pitchy you should not talk to them very loud you need to be uh, a little bit quiet more <laughs> uh, if you if you are uh, someone who talks very loud uh, you need to know this thing when you go to a patient who has dementia you need to lower your voice a little bit you can ask them uh, you need to familiarize yourself with them you need to introduce yourself you can go to the patient and say hi carol good morning i'm saim i'll be your nurse for today how are you doing today with a smiley face uh, not like hello carol uh, i'm your nurse today uh, are you happy to take your medicines she will say no of course because you need to be very friendly with this kind of patients all right and you need to talk to them politely and with the kindness then only they are going to respond to you otherwise the whole day you will be having trouble dealing with the patient they can also have uh, agitation, uh, being resistant. They can also be very difficult to deal with. They can be very worried. They can feel anxious. So you are there to support them in this situation. They can also be in a situation where, where they feel like a, a loss of control or inability to communicate properly and uh, they can also say don't touch me all right i know what i'm doing you don't need to tell me all right so you you with their there you need to reassure them tell them i know that you know what you're doing but i'm here to support you if you need any help or you can also ask them help you can say that uh, uh, are you happy to take shower now are you happy to take bath now uh, can you undo your buttons and then she'll be excitingly say yes i can do so you can tell okay i'll undo your one button and you can do the second one and uh, uh, in this way you are going to interact with the patient and also 
and also it will be easier for you to handle them uh, and if if uh, you can uh, if you're going to prepare if you if you're going to take menu from that patient you can ask them uh, i'm here to take your menu what would you like to have for lunch and they, uh, and then she said i don't want to have lunch you can tell them i like broccoli soup or i like lentil soup and then she can say maybe uh, yes i like lentil soup too so this is the way you are going to talk them you need to give them suggestions you can also uh, engage them in your conversation then only you will get your answer why they behave this way is because they are thinking they don't have any problem because of their memory loss and they also uh, they don't feel like they are someone who's having trouble with something so you need to know this that they don't know that they have this problem because you are the carer there so you can support them with this and also they are going to re react and respond to you how you speak to them we have already discussed that uh, that communication is very very important and you need to provide reassurance to them let them know that you are there to support them and um, use gentle and calm tone otherwise there will not there, otherwise you are going to have a difficult time handling dementic patients and also someone asked me that if a normal patient and dementia patient sit together what should we do you should you should not do anything just let them sit and relax if you are going to tell them maybe they are just chit chatting or they are just having uh, gossip about something so you don't need to do do anything at that point but just keep an eye if they are sitting in the corridor or if they are sitting at the nursing counter you you can just keep an eye on them um, you can do the, your things what you are doing just keep an eye on them what they're doing and what are they saying about if if the normal person is getting agitated with them then of course you can take that patient away or otherwise they just behave like normal uh, people they don't behave differently if they're talking to someone or sitting with someone it's perfectly fine unless they have covid or something but if they they will be having covid they would be having covid then obviously we will not put them with the other patients they'll be in the isolation or they will be in the cubicle so if they are in the in the in the bay with six or five other patients and they are talking to someone it's obviously fine but if the other patient if the normal patient is getting very agitated with them or getting anxious about them then uh, what we do here is we do cohort baying cohort bay means um, if a patient has dementia we usually if someone is confused or uh, if they have dementia or alzheimer's we put them now uh, with the other patients who have dementia as well so we don't mix usually we don't mix uh, normal patients and dementic patients together but there are chances there are a lot of time uh, we don't have beds available with the cohort being so uh, all the patients like normal and the dementia patients usually they are together in the room if they are talking to each other they are sitting together it's perfectly fine you don't need to worry unless they get agitated unless they try to harm the patient unless they are uh, uh, touching their things or going very close to them uh, then you need to talk to that person you need to talk to the patient who has dementia you need to tell them uh carol this is not your bed let's go back to your bed uh, would you like to have a tea or coffee you can also always um, offer them something or biscuit they love eating biscuits you can tell them let's have biscuit and um they'll be very happy to go with you if not then you need to try another way of talking you need to give them other other um, offers or give them other ideas to do or do things you can also give them a pen and paper to write something for you you can also give them coloring books they can uh, paint they can draw and also you can give them reading books they are really good at reading uh, yeah and uh, also some people they like to do knitting you can provide that stuff you can ask their relatives what they like to do in their leisure time and you can help them with that so as a nurse or as a carer uh, we need to know how we can help a patient who has dementia there are things that you can do if you are working in a care home if you are uh, giving private care to that patient uh, or you are uh, going into their house to look after them there are different things that you can do you can help them with shopping uh, laying the table 
gardening and talking to the dog or taking them for a walk but if you are in a hospital there are different things that we can help them with uh, we can help them uh, with eating and drinking we need to know what are their preferences what they like to eat and what they don't like to eat and also with that if they don't know what they are going to eat or if they are not eating uh, there is also high risk for uh, utis constipations and headaches and um, they can also having trouble recognizing the foods and also uh, forgetting what they like to eat and um, refusing or spitting out the food or uh, they can ask you different combination of foods so uh, it's uh, totally up to you uh, you can ask all the information from their relatives and get, write it down in their in their file. It will be easier for the other sport workers or you also to handle that patient. So um, how you can help them with eating and drinking, you can set aside uh, enough time for the meals. Don't rush. Uh, let them take their time to eat. And also uh, you can provide them some if they like the crisps or lace or chocolates or candies. You can ask the relatives to bring those things and you can keep them aside and also they can also forget to drink which is very very important it can lead to constipation so you need to remind them every time you pass by you can say that carol have a drink love and then they'll be uh, they can just take a sip or they can have coffee or chocolate hot chocolate or uh, just water or if they like it with squash you can mix with squash and uh, a lot of people here they drink uh, squash and water and uh, they love it so maybe you can ask them what flavor of squash you like do you like it with orange or cherry or whatever so you can prepare that drink and keep it on their bedside and they will be able to drink and you need to remind it uh, obviously because if they can't remember that they need to drink they'll be having constipation or dehydration and it can lead to different problems so every time you pass by you can remind them just have a drink love and then they'll be able to drink and also uh, some patients uh, when they develop dementia they can also have incontinence problems so so incontinence is a big problem here and then they can lead to different uh, diseases like uh, if someone is lying down in, in uh, lying down in wet bed it can lead to pressure ulcers or um, it can lead to any skin infections or uh, friction or anything so uh, if someone is incontinent you need to check them very frequently you need to check them their pad if they the pads are wet if they are wet we need to change everything we need to change their pads we need to wash them we need to change their beddings so each and everything we need to do if they're incontinent and we are the responsible person to check their pads frequently or to you can ask also ask them that um did you we can i check your pad are you happy for me to check your pad uh, or uh, do you feel like you need to go to the toilet do you feel like going or something you can ask them and they they can also sometimes even with dementia they can answer your query very they can answer your question and um, uh, if they have uti obviously if they don't if they won't be able to drink or if they're lying in in week or in a stool uh, they can drop uti very easily they can have constipation so uh, constipation can lead to agitation as well so um, we need to help them uh, with those things also um, keep keeping the area clutter free is very very important their bedside should be clutter free there should be no wires there should not hazards uh, which can lead to um, lead them to fall uh, if they like to uh, sleep in a light we need to keep their bedside light on so they can uh, they can uh, sleep properly and if they like to uh, go to the toilet by themselves we need to uh, make we need to post a sign of toilet on the toilet uh, door so it will help them to go to the toilet or they can see that that's the toilet and then they won't be uh, getting lost anything also um, we can help them with bathing if they can't do by themselves but again you need to ask them are you happy to have a bath or are you uh, happy to have a freshening up and they will say yes or no if they are saying no then you need to go back to them after some time and ask again they may say yes i'm happy to do it because some people they like it they like to have a bath or shower in the morning some prefer in the afternoon so you need to ask them and for dementia patient their mood can be different 
different uh, every time you visit them so you need to ask them uh, are you happy to have a shower are you happy to have a bath and they say yes then you can do it if they say no don't push them uh, because uh, uh, it can lead to them being agitated it can lead to them being very difficult so uh, you need to you need to be patient and come back again and ask them after some time after five minutes or ten minutes are you happy to have a shower now or if they say no you can ask them what time would you be having shower then they can tell you the time after five minutes you can go back and ask them again and um, also uh, you need to um, you need to ask them what kind of help they want if they say that no i don't need any help and honestly guys some patients they don't like look like they are they have dementia just don't ignore them if you feel like uh, they don't look like they have dementia but still they have dementia uh, look after them uh, very very carefully and also you need to provide them full attention and you need to take care of them so them because what happen is looking at someone doesn't uh, diagnose them with anything so you are not there to diagnose them by uh, just looking at them if they have diagnosis of dementia and they are 55 only and they, they look like they are well dressed they look very nice and clean and tidy uh, it doesn't mean that they don't have these symptoms all right so you need to know as a nurse or as healthcare support worker you need to know whether they have alzheimer's or dementia or delirium or anything like that and then you need to talk to them in the different way as you do with the other patients of with dementia and also they can have sleep problems um, and um, what we need to do if they have sleep problems we need to avoid caffeinated drinks at night or in the afternoon we can give them after that we should not give them any caffeinated drinks or um, don't give them like too much fluid before they sleep because if they are going to the toilet again and again they won't be able to sleep so you need to know what they are drinking <laughs> before they sleep and uh, also what we can do is uh, we shouldn't let them sleep very often during the day so they can sleep better at night so we need to limit the daytime naps if possible <laughs> and um, also as a healthcare support worker you need to take care of yourself also when when you are going to work for dementia patients or elderly ward it gets very difficult it gets very hard sometimes to understand and uh, to um, follow the routine if you feel like you are not coping with the situation or you're not coping with the dementic patients and this word is not for you dementia people they are not for you you can always change your word or just get a consultation with your gp because they can help you better or and you you can get some rest also for one or two days or one week if you like because uh, i know it, it, it sometimes it gets very difficult if you are continuously working in the same way with the same patient it can get difficult if you have very very agitated patients or very very aggressive patients uh, but if they are like uh, very calm and uh, you know how to handle them or you know how to talk to them what's their likes and dislikes then you can handle them very easily and you would love to go back in that area even for two weeks so you need to understand them they don't need to understand you but you need to understand them their ways of uh, uh, ma making their routine or if they like to make their bed let them make their bed if they like to tie up if they like to if they like to uh, make their bed yeah let them make their bed if they like to tie up their shoe or uh, their clothes or something let them do it and also you can provide them with the different things to engage to keep them engaged and uh, if they are engaged with something they are not going to bother you too much all right and uh, these are the ways uh, the most important thing is your communication your way of communicating with them and also your understanding the patient and uh, how you respond to them and also uh, engaging their relatives also if you need any further information from them so dementic patients can be difficult and can be very easy it's totally up to you how to take them uh, how you take them and how you understand their daily routines all right and i would say they are not very difficult honestly they are very funny they are very nice very lovely people 
why because they can't remember what they're saying and sometimes what it happens like uh, um, hi good morning and after five minutes you go back again and they say who are you <laughs> then you need to introduce yourself again and they are really really nice honestly uh, it's better to work with dementia patient than the normal patient because if someone is very very upset and they are normal and they know what they're doing and they are abusing the staff or uh, they are not happy with the staff and they are saying bad things about stuff and then you feel it you feel it here in the heart <laughs> but if the if someone has dementia and they are saying these things you don't feel that much and then you say like um, you feel like um, they don't know what they're saying and uh, it's okay it's it's not a big problem because they don't know what they're doing or they don't know what they're saying so uh, honestly for me working with dementia patients is quite easy if you know the tricks if you know the uh, how to handle them if you know how to behave with them how to talk to them and uh, there are a lot of dementia training as well in the nhs you can get those training if you are not sure how to handle them how to talk to them if you are weak you feel like uh, you cannot work with them you need to get those training first before you uh, going before you start working in a geriatric ward or ward or elderly ward and all the medical wards they have dementic patients and then first of all the, they give you dementia training which is very very important and I, I know back home if someone has any mental health problem or if they have dementia they they are in a totally different ward or they are in a mental hospitals but here they are all together all the patients they are mixed and uh, we don't have any separate wards or anything like that for dementia patients or mental health condition patient but if someone is very very aggressive or very agitated then we have uh, mental health nurses for them if someone is trying to get out of bed very often or if someone is trying to hit you or uh, if they are throwing things or them something like that then we have mental health nurses for them they can help them uh, they can help uh, them calm down and uh, they are usually one to one so one person one uh, patient and one mental health nurse so you should not worry that much about this guys when you are back home don't think about it when you come here you get the training you know the tricks and trips how to handle these patients and how to do the things and how to uh, how to um, take care of yourself and your patients so don't think about uh, this uh, ad that much when you are back home just concentrate on on your paperwork just concentrate on your english test or your uh, other test or cbt or uh, oski all right and uh, that's it i think i have explained everything in detail if you still have any questions uh, let me know in the comment section and i'll be very happy to answer those queries for you and uh, i'll see you soon in the next video take care bye bye